Hey guys, Laura from Metalwani here, and today I'm talking to Mr. Jeff Waters from Annihilator. Jeff, how are you? Very good, my fellow Canadian. How are you doing? Great. So happy to chat to you again. I'm pretty yeah, excited. For sure. Yeah, pretty stoked to be talking to you again. Last time we spoke, it was negative a bazillion, and finally we're in summer, so we can enjoy enjoy some time outside and also enjoy maybe a little tour that's happening um, across Canada soon. So I'm excited yeah. to talk to you about that as well. Great. Yeah. So looking forward to, to coming back and touring in Canada for the first time in decades. Which I is know. Crazy. Yeah. So you are hitting the road. Annihilate is hitting the road in Canada very soon. And it is your first Canadian tour since 1993. Why now? Like, tell us about your decision to bring Annihilator back to Canadian fans. Well, we've done some shows in this area of the country uh, and ventured all the way up to Calgary for the Calgary Metal Fest last year, but uh, and Heavy MTL in Montreal and the Quebec City show and, and a lot of shows around the, the area of Ottawa where we uh, where I live. Um, but uh, really, I think Annihilator, when we had our first album out in 89 till about 92, 93, um, was kind of like the... Our, our first couple albums went really well uh, around the world, but then in around the 93 era, that's kind of when the, the whole classic, traditional, or whatever you want to call it, heavy metal and thrash metal, was kind of getting, uh, all of a sudden there was this mad rush to drop bands in that style of music and go for the new new metal or newer stuff that was coming. Like Pantera helped lead the way with the heavier music, but there was also the new metal, which was a little more industrial, a little techni uh, techno I right? I don't know what the words are, but mm -hmm. just with a little more machine drum machine driven stuff, and you know the bands, and and there was the mm -hmm. Seattle scene, which changed the whole industry, and uh, so this kind of traditional stuff. Uh, and Annihilator was not a groundbreaking band when it came out. It was we were playing that you know thrash meets heavy metal stuff. We weren't coming out with a, let's say like a Pantera who was coming out with a brand new sound. Yeah. Um, so we were kind of pushed out with ninety percent of the other bands. And we're getting dropped from labels, uh, but we just got lucky. We we kept we kept uh, following overseas, Japan and, and Europe, and then South America, and mainly Europe, which just a bigger and bigger. And when we get dropped there, we did an album called King of the Kill, which is huge over there, and that that really set us up to sustain a, a career if we wanted to do it right. And um, and and be honest and write good music, or the best we could at least at the times that we were writing and doing records. And we've had a really good career overseas. And when I finally said, okay, well metal clubs and promotion bookers, agents are and labels are starting to sign this music, you know, ten plus years ago. I try I thought, okay, well now it's the time for Annihilator to, to make a shot at coming back, um, mm -hmm. and being able to, to tour this great country in, in the States, right? Um, it didn't work out that way. It was it was kinda like a reality check that well, we were never a big band in North America anyway, so it's not like a big reunion or a big comeback. And we're also, again, not playing some new. We're not a young band playing some, you know, new kind of music. It was a. It was not the easy thing I thought it would be. Um, we were riding the su continued success overseas, and you kind of get used to that. And you think, okay, now we'll come back to North America. Well, it didn't work out at all. I was like, oh no, all disappointed, but uh, totally understand it. Um, and even up to this point, although we do have a following in the States and Canada, uh, it's more like internet-based, underground, you know, metal fans of this kind of style found us or knew of us and kept watching us along the way. Uh, I went to agents uh, for a few years and said, do you, you know, want to book Annihilator's first, you know, tour in, here in, in many years? And uh, they were all sort of chuckling, saying, hey, congrats on your continued success overseas, but it's just not something we want to get do right mm -hmm. we don't think we don't think anybody will do it so i finally got sick of that and just pick up the phone and said what if i could just bypass tour agents and labels and management and all these people and and go directly to the venues and some of the local promoters like in calgary like nate of course yeah that's the calgary metal Fest. productions yeah and call these people up that we know are real metal heads so to speak and 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 like to help out in the industry uh and thought, hey, well, we'll do this tour on our own, and I reserved a pile of money in my bank account for its inevitable failure because, uh, you know, I didn't think it would get too much promotion or attention or ticket sales, and also the other major factor is you don't see bands crossing this country. You see them coming up from the States for That's a, very a true, post. yeah. And the reason is simple. It's because the bus and gas money is insane to cross this huge country, so... 
unless you're, you know, a big Canadian band only, like a Tragically Hip or, or a big Canadian artist, you don't go across the country in one full shot. So we, uh, I knew this was going to be a financial loss, but I, I wanted to do this at least one more time and simply not for myself or anybody else. I think it was really just, you know, so I could say I did it and, and the fans do want to see us, which I know there are fans across the country that want to see us, at least just do them, do it for them and, and be willing to put your own money into that loss. And fortunately, most of the cities now are, are sold out or close to sold out and it, it, it's not going to be a financial loss. So we, we actually, we did it. We bypassed the tour agencies that weren't interested and through word of mouth and Facebook and, and Metalhead community and some good promoters, we, uh, we're, we're, we're already successful on this bloody tour. We're, we're just looking forward to going to Victoria on June 12th to start it off. And um, Yeah, that's and, amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like totally psyched on it. It's like, wow, we did it. There are people out there that want to see us, and there are good uh, people in the industry here that, that do want to support this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's great. What's even more great, Jeff, is that you just answered my next question for me. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you exactly how things were going because last time we spoke, you did bring up, um, you know, talking to the independent and local uh, promoters in smaller towns or across the country, like um, Nate from Big Nate Productions and, um, you know, people in Saskatchewan and whatever else. And it sounds like that experience of booking it independently has gone quite successfully. Yeah, it it, it was... uh... You know, one of the things that we that I, I knew was that it was summer festival time in Europe, and mm-hmm. that is uh, for for bands that have been over to Europe and have a, a career. I say career because you know, like who regularly do this for a living. Um, you know that that Europe is the place that you go to in the summer to play to choose. But essentially, in a way, if in a, in some sense, you choose where you're going to go, what festivals. And from May to August, there's hundreds of festivals with with more than ten thousand people that pl- just play metal all across the continent, their continent. And if if you're looking at thirty thousand or more, you're still looking at a hundred festivals in the summer there. Yeah. Uh, and if you're looking at eighty thousand or sixty thousand, you're looking at a dozen. So it's it's kind of a place where if you play metal and you have a following, that is the place that you look forward to going every summer. So. I had to fit in this Canadian run after I finished our 16th studio album, which I actually finished last night. Oh, and really? Congratulations. We start, we, we start rehearsals tomorrow, so the scheduling couldn't have been perfect, more perfect. The, the imperfect part of the plan was that I just figured maybe 10 to 11 shows would work for Canada, and we had 14 in the first week. I made the phone calls and realized there was another you know, eight cities, and especially the east of Canada, that that wanted us to, to jump in on the tour. The problem is we, we couldn't go earlier because of the album and we couldn't go later because of the summer festivals. Gotcha. So, really so you know, we maybe, maybe we'll, six months from now, maybe we can do another run with uh, and maybe bring some other old school Canadian metal bands along with us and do a little mini metal Canadian tour or something. Yeah, that'd be fun. Speaking of um, other bands, I remember seeing that you used Facebook earlier this year to recruit your support bands for this tour. And we've got Canada's Mutank, is that how I pronounce it? Exactly, yeah. And Australia's Mason will be joining you on the road. I'm guessing yeah. you had many submissions come through. How did you choose the supports for this tour? Well, first off, we thought, okay, so we're going to bring some other, uh, some name bands uh, that we can get. And when I, I talked to them, then you realize the reality of the finances. You, you To get name bands on a tour, uh, you, you've got to pay. Mm-hmm. And it, they have to get paid, right? Because they're a known band, and you have to get paid. And I thought about putting that together and talked to a few bands pretty good, and then realized that the projected loss on the tour would be hugely greater than that uh, by by bringing a couple other pretty well known acts with us. Um, so then I changed and I said, "Well, wait a second, okay, I don't want to go too much out on the money here, but." I got to have some good bands, so why don't I just go and first band that popped to mind was was um, a band called Basin, and the reason why is because last year they did our last our second headline tour that we did for our last album okay. in Europe. They they did the whole tour with us, and um, they were really cool guys. But their music is fantastic, and they're really cool guys. They you had to have both of those to bring a band. Um, so we asked them, and we thought, well, there's no way they're coming over here because this is expensive. Like this is a really tough one, and. Anybody that knows the crossing the country thing will know. And they said, you know what, mate? I think they said mate. Probably did. <laughs> uh, they're going to pull their, their 
finances together. We pay them, but it's not it's not a it's not a great fee. Um, but they they saved up some money as well, and they're they're actually over. I think now flying into Victoria now because they want a vacation in Canada. They've never been here, and it's just like a total dream for them. Oh, so that's we got it. We got an amazing band, Mason, that's coming, and their music is fantastic, total old school thrash metal, and they're good, like they're really good. That's why we brought them to Europe. And then I thought, okay, let's get another band, but let's get a Canadian band. So I, I saw this band, Mutank, uh, the Vakken Battle of the Band's winner winners, uh, I think from 2014. But I, I saw them, and I saw them in the club too, and here uh, in Canada, and they uh, they were just good. So I said, hey guys, do you want to go with us? <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? So. It's kind of based around what bands can afford to do it, and also they got to be good and they got to be good people. So uh, we got a good team. We got a good team on this one. I'm really excited about seeing all three bands play next Friday at Dickens, which is the 16th of June. Um, yeah, it's all, all all good good bands and yeah, good good music from yeah. all three bands. I think. Six months in since um, Triple Threat was released, the package. How have the fans been enjoying the package? And more, I guess, for my curiosity, how have they been enjoying Acoustic Annihilator? Yeah, I, I think for the the Annihilator fans that have followed us over the years, whether they're faithful, they love everything we do, or they only like certain albums and certain styles and things that I'm doing, um, or that we're doing, it's like you kind of knew that the acoustic thing was going to be like an interesting bonus thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. something, okay, well that's different. I've never seen Annihilator do that or I've never seen many bands that play heavy metal thrash metal or thrash metal uh, that do that kind of stuff. But um, So you knew that was going to be an interesting part of it. Uh, the, the concert DVD that was on there too, Bang Your Head, that was going to be cool for newer fans just to sort of get a best of our live set kind of vibe and to, to see the band that's that's been touring now, the lineup that's been touring for a while now and, and will be touring the near future at least. Um, so you get to see the band live. So that, that kind of, you know, helps out for the, the Canadian fans and that want to come out and check us out. They can they can see that even on YouTube. There's clips of it and stuff yeah. like that. So, uh, And then the, um, the mini documentary was kind of like a little surprise thing for the Europeans because they they love that. They, they really love in general, love Canada. Uh, the, the, the Europeans that haven't been to Canada have always seen Canada as like the, the apparently this coolest, awesomest place and it's so huge and the uh, people are nice and all these all these things and, and some of the things are true. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but uh, it was, for them, uh, the Europeans really seem to love to see simple things like us in the living room at the house or at, at the beach or nearby or in the studio at my place. I mean, those are the kinds of things that are different than other sort of concert DVDs and, and, and things like that. So I think when you put it all together, I knew it was going to be something that our fans would like and, and, and that translated well overseas in the sales. We, we knew that was going to go well. But uh, I think it also gives an opportunity for future fans, hopefully in North America, to sort of see something more recent from the band and the lineups that you would see. Let's say we started doing some festivals in the States next year, which we're actually starting to talk about now. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I think it was great. It was, like Borat said, a great success. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So moving on to the new album that's coming out, um, well, I think I read somewhere about it coming out in October. You did just I'm not. I'm not at liberty to say too <laughs> much. Even even though it's just a small little thing in the big picture, it's still, in an Islanders world, it, this one's a very exciting one and we're supposed to shut the heck up. With, okay, with well, I won't, I won't speculate. Sometime in the future we'll be getting a new Annihilator album, which is very exciting for me. Um, yeah. You did just mention that you finished it yesterday, or last night, rather. Yeah. So is yeah. that everything? Like, you've wrapped up mixing, recording, production, it's all done? Mastering, everything's done, CD wow. booklet, all that stuff. We're waiting for the artist to do the cover this week and next week, and then we're uh, we're finished. I scheduled to deliver the whole package next week. So it it looks like, if everything rolls right, it's, it's the end of October. It comes out, and we are pretty soon about to announce one of the coolest tours we've ever done in Europe with a band that I've been a huge fan of ever since the beginning. So we're going to announce some album stuff and then the European tour and then, um, yeah, it's going to be a blast. And I think just every artist, of course, says their new album is, and you understand it, you know, uh, when you're a painter or a poet or a musician and you create stuff, uh, you're an artist, you, 
you always usually like and love what you do, and, and it's very common for all of, all of us to say, oh, this is probably one of the best things we've ever done in this many years, or and, that, and that's normal because it's your baby, but, you know, hopefully the ego goes away and reality check comes in six months later or whatever, and you sit back and you go, ah, damn, I, I should have written four better songs, or I sh- should have done this to the production of the mix. And But in this in this case, I think... And I've always known this, so I, I don't usually go out and say, oh, this album's amazing, blah, blah, blah. This time I'm going to actually go blind and say it, the screw it all, because I think this is one of our best ones I think we've done. And it ended up probably being because I uh, I had a, a, a co-producer come in for the first part of the record, and, um, and he also co-wrote all the music with me on the record. Oh, wow. Side. And that's our bass player, Rich Hinks, um, our UK bass player. So... That brought a huge kick in the butt to me. That sort of, I think that livened me right up and just woke me up to a bunch of things. He'd make some comments on what he liked about the uh, the early Annihilator style. And he kind of made it clear to me that I don't have to be one of these musicians that, that go back to some of their earlier successful albums and try to copy it because that would be the biggest mistake in the world. He kind of He kind of guided me there without actually getting me to just think, okay, go back and, and do something like that. He sort of went around that, pushed me to go around that, and the result was kind of like the first two records, uh, the way I kind of recorded it all, uh, and the, the way the production went, and the way some of the arrangements of the songs were put together. And by the end of the music writing, I realized, holy shit, he just guided me to doing exactly what I should never have done, which is go back to the roots and try to pull off getting something almost as good as the first couple and and, he, and I think that's exactly what we ended up getting. Wow, amazing. You did actually speak last time we chatted, you did speak about the challenge of keeping everybody happy, right? Because I think I asked you if you were going to return the, to the, your thrash roots again and you said, well, you know, people in Japan will say one thing was better and people in Europe will say the other thing was better yeah. and it's so hard to keep everybody happy when you're putting out new albums. And I'm just wondering, and you kind of answered it there, but I'm just wondering if there was a particular style that you adopted for this upcoming record. No, the, the only thing I, I pre-wrote uh, down uh, in, uh, in writing, I just wrote it down and I pinned it on the desk of my uh, studio console and it was, there was just a couple of points. One was, I, unlike... The last record, Suicide Society, I don't want to let the majority of my influences and the fan, metal fan, metal musician side of me get the best of me on this record. Suicide Society was a good record, I'll say good, right in the middle. It's good, it wasn't crappy, it wasn't amazing, it was good. Um, But I did realize later that I had just sort of said, when I was singing the record, for example, I would sing with a Hetfield wannabe kind of vibe on certain words, or the, the Megadeth, the Mustaine-ish thing, or maybe even a Lane Staley or Ozzy wannabe kind of thing. And it's not a wannabe, it's more like these are my four favorite singers other than Halford and Dickinson, you know? So, mm-hmm. uh, and David Lee Roth, um, and Bon Scott. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I just, I was more of a fan on the last record, musically and vocally, and... And that really came through. You can hear the influences and where I got everything from in my music history and influence. This one, I wrote down, do not do the Hetfields, Mustaines, the this and that. Go back to the King of the Kill record and the Allison Hill record because despite a guy named Randy Rampage being the singer on the Allison Hill record, uh, fans that know of our early roots, uh, know of our demos that I sang on and knew that Many years before Alice in Hell was recorded, songs like Alice in Hell and all these worked on demo forms through the the, uh, the trading cassette trading network that, that the world had then, and that was kind of a more heavy and more original kind of vocal style that I did, and that that went through into the first bunch of singers with Annihilator, like my influence producing the vocals for these guys. It was basically do this because this is what I would do, and. That was a key on this new record as I was going to stay away from trying to be influenced by other singers, get back to my own thing if there is such a thing. And I think I did that this time. Um, and then the other thing was, well, musically, of course, was to just, you know, if you write a riff and it sounds very Slayer-ish and you love it and you say, I don't care if it's a little slayer I love this riff, you're going to throw it in the garbage, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and you're going to write something that is more, people would say that's Waters-ish. 
So that's kind of, a, that was really the, the main key. And the, the other one that I kind of broke the rule on, the other third thing I think I said on the, 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 the letter to myself, I guess, um, the notes, was that uh, don't rely on catchy commercial choruses because that, that becomes, in a, in a songwriter sense, a very tempting thing. The catchier your choruses are, the more memorable they are, Therefore, technically, you could call that the more commercial that is, the more accessible or rememberable or whatever, memorable. Um, so throw it out the window and go back to what I was doing in the early days where I didn't give a damn about the choruses. It was, it was about the whole song and not just about building around a chorus because I got too easily sucked into that one for, for quite a few years now. Um, this time I just said start with an intro, start with a solo thing, go to a verse, go to a pre-chorus, go to a chorus, and make make all of those as good as I can, mm-hmm. and, and inch my way through it rather than basing everything around a catchy chorus. Um, and then that's good. half of that work. The other half, it, I just came back to what I usually did. And the other half was just some really bizarre stuff, and that was kind of like the early days. Well, it sounds like we've got something in store for us come the end of the year. So I'm pretty excited to hear it. And Me too. Can't, can't I mean, wait listen, to... I, I've done, this is our 16th studio record, and I don't think I've talked about a record like this in half a dozen records. You sound so we'll pretty excited happen. about it, Jeff, which is great news. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, it also could mean it's the worst album I ever did, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, with the tour just around the corner, Jeff, are we going to maybe be privy to some previews of the new album? We, well, guys are flying in tonight. Our bass player Rich is flying in in about five hours, and then tomorrow afternoon, our drummer Fabio from Italy flies in, and our guitar player Aaron comes in tomorrow. So, and I know, I think Fabio was filling in for the Raven drummer at a festival in Sweden. So he's been occupied with Raven stuff for a while, uh, for a week and a half, two weeks, learning that they're set. And I know Rich has been busy with some studio production, and Aaron's been busy here with his band. Uh, working on an album so this is the one time where our whole band is kind of like like oh damn we're too busy to get ready for this tour <laughs> do you know what i mean so yeah. we're we're um uh we're just totally we're, we're you know what we looked at our set list too and we thought okay what are we going to do on this tour and then we realized that our whole set list on the last european tour uh, other than one or two songs was the perfect set list for Canada because it had a lot of the earlier songs in it from the first early album. So oh, right. we realized there's going to be a lot of old schoolers that never followed us after our first two or three albums. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new people as well, though. I mean, a lot of yeah. new Canadians who didn't get the chance to see you in 93 or at Metal Fest yeah, last year it, or anything like that. So it's, I reckon it's going to be quite the mix. Yeah, I think it's going to be, you know, the first four albums are the ones that, you know, fourth album has a song called King of the Kill that we always play. We've never stopped playing because it's, that song is probably our most popular song in, in the set uh, for our career so far. And then the next one would be either Alison Heller set The World on Fire would be the next ones. Uh, over here, though, people would generally go, oh, Alison Hell, that was the only album that, that mattered or that they even had out. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's like... So that, you know, you, you got the old ones in the set list already because in Europe we decided last year, let's go back and do a lot of older songs just for the fun of it, right? And, and we realized that set list was almost perfect for Canada. Yeah, excellent. Well, I wasn't, it was at Bang Your Head last year that you, um, sorry, 2015 that you put out on Triple Threat, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. so I wasn't at Bang Your Head, so I'm excited to see what you guys bring next Friday. So uh, don't really mind. <laughs> next, next Friday... Yeah, Friday week oh, no. over here. Is that quick? Yeah, I know. Oh, no, it's going to be a week from Friday. Yeah, so so not this Friday, next Friday. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you scared yeah. me. I'm not even ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am, and I know there are tons of people here in Calgary who are very excited to see you. I know that all across the country there's going to be some very excited heavy metal fans ready to welcome you to their towns and, and fist pump and headbang along with you while you play these rooms. So Yeah, now I just have to figure out how I can lose 15, 20 pounds in a week. That's what I'm trying to figure out now. How can that be done without <laughs> well, any kind of drugs? You'll lose it on stage anyway, Jeff, through, you know, well, just having the best time ever, so it'll yeah, be fun. I'd- by the end of the Canadian tour, I'll be in reasonable shape. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny when you get in the studio, which I, if, except for a 70,000 tons of metal show we did and a, a host of a jam on that cruise uh, in February, it's been four months. This is now almost to the date four months of nonstop 12 hour minimum days working on the record and living and breathing it and, and having, uh, 
you know, basically being a horrible fiance and uh, and not looking after puppies and health and, and everything and just eat pizza or whatever. And uh, so this is the time when it's finished as of last night and I wake up tomorrow and here we go. We start a new cycle of not worrying about new records or, or living in the studio. And now we get to go out and enjoy the weather, the fans and the, yeah. the music. It's time for you to step outside. Woo, yeah. So exciting. <laughs> Hey, Jeff, thank you so much. This has been a great chat. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And I'm really excited to, you know, meet you next week and shake your hand and say good day and, and welcome you back to Calgary. So um, those are all the questions that I have right now. It's quite funny, actually. Um, last time we spoke, it was my first ever audio interview for Metalwani. So oh, wow. um, it's been, it was kind of important for me to speak to you again. So I really thank oh, you now, for your time. Now you're an old pro. You're yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but I do enjoy I do enjoy our chat. So, um, is there well, anything else that you wanted to add, Jeff? Is there anything that I missed? Nope. Or? Nope? Nope. Okay. Other other than if in Calgary, for example, or any of the other cities um, that we're going to play, come on down because we are going to have a lot of fun on this trip, and it's all heavy metal, thrash metal, and fun. We're going to do a lot of smiling and running around and sweating, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, I can't wait to cheers you with a beer here in Calgary. Um, travel safe, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. We'll see you there. Thanks, Jeff. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. There you are, guys. Lots of really cool Annihilator stuff happening over the next couple of months. We've got the Canadian tour. We've got a new album. We've got a really exciting European announcement coming out soon. So just a little bit for everyone here on the Annihilator front. Thank you so much for listening and have a great night.